Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're going to talk about KDE and specifically how user-friendly KDE is. Now of course user-friendliness will depend on what you already used and what you already know. So like last time, we're going to take the viewpoint of somebody who has barely used any computers before, somebody who's used to Windows and somebody who's used to Mac OS. Now of course KDE isn't as user-friendly as today's sponsor, Safing. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a DEB or an Arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Now let's begin with the point of view of somebody who's never used a computer. These people are pretty rare, but they do exist. So the default plasma layout is pretty simple. You only get a taskbar at the bottom of the screen with a menu, a few application icons and a few system indicators, plus the clock. The rest of the desktop is completely empty out of the box. So any user would normally have their attention drawn to the taskbar. Now the menu icon isn't extremely clear about what it is, or if it's even clickable. I'd say the GNOME Activities button is more discoverable than the Plasma logo as a menu. Of course, hovering over the various icons will let you know what they do, which kinda mitigates the issue. The menu itself is pretty self-explanatory when opened. You get a clearly labeled search field as well as categories, and an all applications list and action buttons to interact with the system. Now the names of the default applications though, aren't very descriptive. Dolphin, Gwenview, Spectacle, Arc. These are not descriptive of what the application does. Well, I guess at least they remove the letter K that plagued the KDE 3.5 error. Now, fortunately, you get a small description of what the app does next to it in the menu. I still think that complete computer beginners would benefit more from purely descriptive application names like files, photo viewer, archive tool, screenshot, etc. Much like what Windows, Mac OS, Gnome or Elementor iOS do. Opening an application adds its icon to the taskbar and you get some direct feedback on what is open, which is easier to understand than on Gnome, where you can't really see which windows are open if they're hidden behind others. The presence of the classic three window buttons are also easy to understand, with minimizing pushing the app into its icon on the taskbar and maximizing and close being very clear. The system indicators use simple icons that are easily legible and understandable, and hovering over them lets the user know what they do, so everything should be discoverable here. Now, in terms of the human interface guidelines, the KDE Plasma application style isn't super coherent. Some apps will display a menu, like the terminal, and some only have a simple header, like Discover. And some have toolbars and a hamburger menu, like Dolphin and Gwenview. Although that hamburger menu system seems to be gaining ground on other applications, which is a good thing because I love hamburgers. Whether they're on the menu or the way to access the menu, it's, it's good. Now this lack of standardization will probably make complete beginners a bit confused, as all apps won't behave in the same way. Still, the default layouts of all these default apps isn't overloaded with options, hiding the complexity behind disabled toolbars and the menu bar or the hamburger menu. Now, I still think that GNOME has a better handle on the default beginner-friendly user experience than KDE, but KDE Plasma isn't bad in that regard. Now, in terms of installing new applications, the default app store Discover is okay. It has clearly laid out sections for updates, applications, or what's already installed. And the install and uninstall buttons are clear enough until you get those weird labels. The buttons labeled with install from Flatpak or install from Snap aren't clear at all for a complete beginner who will definitely not understand what that means and shouldn't even have to be concerned about that in the first place. Now, especially considering that a lot of Linux users already don't really understand the difference between a package, a flat pack, a snap, an app image. 
So for complete beginners that know nothing about computers or Linux, that's just complete nonsense. It shouldn't be here. Now, I much prefer the GNOME approach here, with the default source that is selected, that advanced users can change, and the install buttons just being labeled install. Now KDE Plasma is mainly known for all its customization options, and for complete beginners, these will be hard to get a grip on. While the settings app regroups most of the settings a user can change, these are very, very numerous. And while most options are well explained, navigating this will be a complete nightmare for a first-time computer user, and they will probably shy away from changing anything at all. The fact that the settings for the main panel itself are also found elsewhere than in the main settings could be confusing, as you would expect everything to be located in the same place. I wouldn't expect a complete computer beginner to try and change many things about how their desktop works, but if they ever want to do it, KDE Plasma will be very complex to learn, even though it will allow them, in time, to do whatever they want to do. So, for complete beginners who have next to no experience with computers, I'd say KDE is an okay choice. The applications look fine, they're usable, and they don't have too many options revealed by default. The default layout is simple to understand, and installing apps isn't too tricky. But I still think that GNOME has a better handle on being super accessible to computer beginners. The activities button is more descriptive than the cryptic icon of the Plasma menu, the application names are more descriptive, the grid of icons is more legible for a beginner. It's basically a simpler experience out of the box. So yeah, for complete beginners, I would recommend GNOME over KDE. Now let's move on to the point of view of somebody who's familiar with Windows. The default layout won't be hard to understand, as it's virtually the exact same that Windows has used since Windows 10. The menu is reminiscent of the start menu, the way apps are opened, minimized and closed, and how they appear in the taskbar is identical, and the placement of the notification tray and the clock is also the same. A right click on the desktop also adds some options, just like on Windows. The window controls are placed in the same spot and order, and the panel can be tweaked by right clicking on it. Now, it's it's almost like KDE developers wanted users coming from the most used OS in the world to have a similar experience. Now, that's, that's just a coincidence. Linux devs just want to reinvent the wheel all the time. It's an accident. Now, in terms of default user experience, some apps use menu bars and some don't, much like on Windows. So a user used to that proprietary OS shouldn't be lost at all. Here again, the non-descriptive names of the applications might be a bit confusing at first since Windows has a really down-to-earth naming scheme for their default applications. The store won't be confusing either, even though Discover isn't really up to par visually with the store experience Windows 11 or even Windows 10 users might expect, the base concepts are very similar. Here again, the install with Flatpak and install with Snap buttons will be confusing, as these are concepts that you generally know nothing about when moving to Linux. Now seriously, this feature isn't great for anyone except an advanced Linux user. It shouldn't be on by default. It's it's not a good idea. In terms of settings, the KDE Plasma settings app kind of looks like what's available in Windows 10 in a general layout sense. But after that, all bets are off. Sure, there is a search feature, but here again, the abundance of options, subsections and tabs inside of settings panels and complementary pop-ups will definitely be overwhelming for a Windows user. No, that's not to say that Windows users aren't used to see those weird pop-ups that look nothing like the rest of the system popping up from the settings, but still. Finding where to change the basic settings won't be too complex, as the categories are clearly labeled, but some things will be hidden deep down. For example, just setting the window placement as centered will involve going to Window Management, then Window Behavior, then the Advanced tab, and finally using the drop-down to change the window placement. I like what Plasma is doing with a home page with basic settings, but in my opinion there should be a lot more here. Animation speed or user feedback shouldn't be there. There should be quicker access to things like the mouse settings or the default applications accessible behind the application main category. Now in general, and that goes for every KDE user, I think that Plasma settings would benefit from having a basic and advanced toggle mode, which would limit the number of settings that you can see or expand to everything that we already have. Now someone used to Windows really won't have too many problems using KDE Plasma. The default layout and behavior will be very similar, and the apps behave in the same way, in coherence and all. But when they'll try to make their experience even more Windows-like by using the settings, they will probably be lost at first. These settings are tricky to navigate. Now, for macOS users, KDE is a completely different beast. 
First, the default layout has virtually nothing in common with macOS. You don't get a top panel, you don't get a dock, at least not out of the box. Using a single menu to open applications instead of a full screen launcher also will be a huge departure for macOS users. And the fact that the Spotlight equivalent, KRunner, is on Alt plus F2 instead of Super plus Space means that most users won't ever discover it at all, even though it handles the exact same role and even more. The window controls are also placed in the exact opposite way, and not in the same order, with the Maximize button being in the middle, where the Minimize button would be on macOS. That's another change that will take macOS users by surprise. Now, window management on KDE will be vastly superior to what macOS users enjoy though, with edge tiling and true maximization. Like seriously Apple, how is window management in macOS so bad still? In terms of applications, the non-descriptive names probably will be just as much an issue for macOS users. Apart from Finder and Safari, every default app on macOS has the descriptive name that clearly states what it does. The apps themselves won't be too problematic though, as apart from a few remaining exceptions, the menu bars aren't super present anymore, and the use of mainly toolbars plus title bars combos is relatively similar to what macOS does. Here though, GNOME or Elementary OS have the advantage over KDE in terms of familiarity, the header bars being what macOS uses on most of their apps nowadays. Hamburger menus will feel pretty weird to Mac users as well. Discover, here again, isn't really able to compete with the Mac's App Store in terms of visual, but in terms of features it won't be too different. Now GNOME developers got the memo, they made GNOME software a lot more polished and a lot more beautiful out of the box in GNOME 41. On KDE this is purely utilitarian territory and I can't see anybody using Discover to, to well discover new applications that they don't already know about. The handling of system updates from Discover is different than what macOS users usually use, since their system updates are handled through the system settings. But just as with Windows users, it won't be a major issue to get used to it. So, out of the box, KDE is really not user-friendly at all for somebody coming from macOS. Everything is just too different. Thankfully, KDE Plasma is also the most customizable desktop environment, and the one that can get the closest to macOS as possible. You can have a dock, a top panel with a global menu, a sidebar with your widgets, a full screen launcher, have a spotlight like runner, and even match the exact icons and look and feel of macOS Big Sur. Now there's an excellent video from Linux Scoop that will let you turn your KDE Plasma desktop into a carbon copy of macOS. I left a link in the description if that's something you might be interested in. Now the problem is, to reach that level of carbon copy, it's going to be hard. Following a video on the topic, sure that's easy, but trying to do it yourself, without help, only using the settings and trying out the various Plasma widgets, that's virtually impossible for most regular users. Okay, this video is already way too long, so let's wrap it up. For complete beginners, I think GNOME has the upper hand over KDE. It's got more descriptive app names, its layout is more user-friendly, the handlebar is easier to understand and the applications look more coherent, and the activity system is more discoverable than the cryptic glyph that Plasma uses for its main menu. Now, KDE Plasma is the best desktop environment to direct a Windows user to. It's got the, basically the exact same layout, the exact same start menu, the exact same workings for application minimizing, maximizing and closing, the same notification tray, the same clock. It's, it's even got kind of the same look and feel. It's, it's virtually identical to Windows. And apart from the settings, which won't be located in the same place, I don't think a Windows user will ever get lost using KDE Plasma. It's just what they need. Now for macOS users, KDE can be the best desktop environment. But to realize that potential, you really need to work at it. So either you need to find a complete guide that you know how to follow step by step, or you just have to find out by yourself, which is virtually impossible. No one can figure this out by themselves if they're just coming from Mac to Linux. This potential is here. You can make KDE look exactly like macOS. It's gonna work in the exact same way. But out of the box, it's really not user-friendly for macOS users at all. Like, they're gonna be lost, completely lost. But that's the thing with KDE. It can be user-friendly for literally every user coming from every single operating system. There is mobile or desktop or whatever. But out of the box, it's friendlier to Windows users than to anybody else. Now, this video was made possible by Slimbook, and you probably all already know what Slimbook is by now. They're a computer manufacturer based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptops and desktops for all price points, 
all keyboard layouts, they ship worldwide. I only use their laptop and their desktop nowadays, so if you want a new Linux desktop or laptop, just check out the link in the description below. They're really good. Now, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, you can watch all my stuff on Odyssey as well. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!